Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next chess drama. Chess drama, which also revolves around the subject of cheating, which as we all know, over the last year plus, here in late 2023, has been a very hot topic, particularly in the case of Magnus Carlsen versus Hans Niemann, but extending to other players, other personalities, uh, weighing in on the game. And in this video, I'm going to go through an event that happened yesterday, which was November the 20th, where basically Hikaru Nakamura, yes, that Hikaru, Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura, the one that we all know and love and watch all the time, was kind of accused of cheating. Now, it wasn't a full-on accusal. It was basically everything but an accusal. It was kind of more like a, let's look into this. And I'm gonna unpack all of this for you. And this channel, and myself in particular, I've developed a bit of like this reputation, like, oh, if drama happens, he's gonna cover it. And I would go to argue that while I will cover certain dramatic things in the chess world, because we as humans are, we're like flies drawn to poop. You know, we're going to watch the dramatic stuff and the beefs and whatnot. You're still going to get, in my opinion, an objective, balanced take on this channel. And I like to provide as much context as possible and leave you with my opinion. Like I did during the Hans Niemann thing, which hopefully you can confirm or deny this in the comments. I thought I did a pretty neutral and decent job relaying that information. So what am I talking about and who accused Hikaru of cheating and what is going on? Okay, yesterday I logged into Twitter. Oh, and by the way, last night in London, London, you've been incredible, just amazing events here, and I will be back. Um, I saw this tweet from Hikaru. Vladimir appears to be referencing my record. Is he really accusing me of cheating? And he tagged uh, Levitov Chess, which is a big, big uh, and very good YouTube channel. And then he said, uh, this is Yanni Pomnichi, said, are you jumping on this accusation as well by tweeting this garbage? And I was like, what? <laughs> and so I started, I started going into the rabbit hole, right? So who, who's accused? What's going on? So I clicked this tweet, right? The Jan tweet and said, because he's the hero Gotham deserves, but not the one it needs right now. Now, this is a quote from The Dark Knight, which, by the way, just an incredible trilogy. I mean, just incredible. Uh, ben Affleck is also an incredible Batman, but uh, that trilogy with, with Christian Bale was spectacular. And by the way, I don't know if Jan did this on purpose to just like throw the Gotham in there or if that was accidental. If he did it on purpose, absolute mastermind. Um, and what he is referring to is Vladimir Kramnik. Vladimir Vladimir Kramnik is the 14th world champion, uh, legend of the game, arguable top five, definitely a top 10. You know, we could you, we could debate that. And he's referencing Vladimir's chess.com page, which says some small new piece of statistics recently noticed that a player had scored 45 and a half out of 46 consecutive games against an average ELO of 2950, which is an equivalent to 3600 performance. In those 46 consecutive games, I believe everyone would find this interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I believe everyone would find this interesting. Now, again, when uh, chess players uh, play against people and we think that they are cheating and we are making content out of it, we frequently refer to their moves as interesting. I saw that Grandmaster Eric Hansen, aka Chessbra, said the, the same thing. I mean, I am echoing what he is saying. That's what you say because you don't want to directly accuse. It's interesting. We should look into it. Um, now, Kramnik said that. That is, that is what Kramnik put in his chess.com profile. And Vladimir Kramnik, over the last, let's say, six months or so here in 2023, has put out a lot of things, which I will get into. And he uses this kind of like a Facebook status. <laughs> you remember that back in the day? We used to have Facebook statuses. That was like a thing we did. He he updates this all the time, and I will show you some others. And he's really gone on like a, like a cheating mystery expose and a, and a research and everything. And I will talk about that momentarily. But what does Jan's tweet mean? Chess players are so weird because we never just come out and say anything. Everything is layered. Everything is always like hidden. Everything is always... So people were like, is he just confirming? Is he saying that like Kramnik is the hero that we deserve, but we don't need him right now? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know how people read this. Um, but Hikaru clearly was like, why would you even, you know, respond to this? And, and actually, Yan Nipomnishi, who I hope one day will follow me, um, 
tweeted, uh, you know, this re uh, a while back, which was for you know, people when they discussed wearing headphones during chess, and Jan said, it is impossible to, I I'm just reading this in a Russian accent because Jan's Russian, it's impossible to imagine that a player still is allowed to play with headphones, you know, because Hikaru was allowed to play with headphones. And again, it's like one of these things like, you know, rules for the, you know, is he just saying that Hikaru doesn't play by the rules because he's too big for the rules, right? Like, he, you know, I, I don't know what he's saying or if he's just insinuating that Hikaru gets to play with headphones, but I, and he, that could be fair play an issue. Again, uh, should the players not play with headphones? Probably. So I don't really know what happened in this instance. I would imagine that Hikaru is not deliberately violating rules of, of a tournament. I, I, you know, again, but I don't know. The point is that Hikaru responded... And Kramnik is talking about somebody that went 45 and a half out of 46. Is that Hikaru? This is Hikaru's games from November 16th to November 17th. This was during Hikaru's run back to 3300 on chess.com. If you count the top game versus Artur, that is one. Then we go to the previous page, and now we start counting up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. This was a draw. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Hikaru won 45 out of 46 games. Yeah, I mean... Right? Oh, oh God. <laughs> I mean, if a new account on Chess.com wins 45 out of 46 games, getting banned. Like, it could be Hikaru playing from his toilet, you know, one day when he's bored, but he's going to get banned because they're not going to know who it is. Um, so he's talking about Hikaru, right? Like, uh, again, unless Kramnik just found another person, uh, which is weird. That, that was a, that's a weird thing to put out publicly, like, about, about – that's a weird – like, because he knew what he was doing. I, so what was the logic of putting it out publicly to get us talking about it? What would we find interesting about this? Let's dive deeper. What, what, what is so interesting about this? Hikaru did what is called farming, okay? Not where you, you know, use a hoe and grow crops and tend to animals. Farming is when you play against people who you can beat a lot. And Hikaru has to because there's not a lot of people at 3200 on Chess.com. So he played a 2900, and he beat that 2900, and then he proceeded to play that 2900 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more times. And that 2,900 ran away and didn't want to lose 10 games in a row. So then Hikaru turned his attention to another player who is rated 2,995. And his FIDE rating, this is, I believe, Levan Brigadze, I was reading. I, I, I don't, maybe it was on his chest, like, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I saw that somewhere. Um, but uh, maybe I'm completely making that up. But I think I saw it in, like, a timestamp of a Hikaru video. Um... And, you know, Hikaru beat this person one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in a row. And this is, I am, right? About 250 points lower rated than Hikaru. Yeah, so he beat him also many times in a row. Then, and by the way, 99 right here, it's an 11 move game, right? So Hikaru is averaging like 80%. Here he played 97, he played a very nice game. Probably what his opponent blundered. 83, you know, 92 Whatever. I mean, it's and then Hikaru played Liam Putnam. Now Liam Putnam is a young thirteen-year-old title player who played Hikaru a lot and lost a lot because he's not good enough to beat Hikaru like ever. And if it was, it would be like one in fifteen. That's I'm not being disrespectful to Liam. Hikaru's probably the best three-zero player on the planet and second best blitz player on the planet and could very in 40% of the days he's the best blitz player on the planet 60% of the days is probably Magnus and Hikaru beat this guy a lot then he beat Angel like one game then he went back to beating Paola <laughs> you know like and then he beat uh, Artin from from Iran and I, again it's like Hikaru beat a bunch of people in a row until he lost to this this Turkish dude uh several times who's 3100 and is capable of beating Hikaru Sometimes. Now, he's talking about Hikaru. Why? Why is he talking about Hikaru? We will get into that in a moment. Um, well, let's get into it now. What? Yeah, I... Did anybody find Hikaru's record interesting? Because I was just like, he's farming people. Is it like an exceptional 
odds, I was reading somewhere, somebody did a report, like, Hikaru's odds of winning every one of those games based on the ratings was like this, and then, you know, the odds of him winning 45 out of 46 games was 2%. Like, the odds that he would lose a game were, at least once, were 98%. Um, yeah, it was like an improbable run. Having said that, you have to realize, like, when you're down 7 nothing. You want to get it over with. I mean, there's other psychological effects there. You just kind of want to like play. And Hikaru just beats you down morally. And I mean, I'm sure if Magnus decided to play 50 Blitz games at some point, he would do the exact same thing. Magnus frequently logs in and beats people like 18 to 1, right? So I don't know. And Hikaru has played Blitz online for like 20 years. Like Hikaru was playing Blitz on the internet before the internet had chess, okay? This guy's been playing Blitz online forever. I mean, literally forever. And he is able, like Steph Curry, like you watch, Steph Curry can make 49 out of 53s, right? Like, is he on steroids? Like, I, uh, mental, physical, I don't know, right? I, I don't know how steroids even work in basketball. So that was just a weird thing. And, you know, Kramnik has said a lot of things that I, like, understand and agree with. Um, this was recently... Uh, Kramnik has been on this crusade. This was after he played a few games and recently, and he said, I have decided to stop playing on chess.com from tomorrow on. Too many obvious cheaters here. Nothing is done to clean the platform from those small crooks. Harsh words, but true. Would continue informing those who care publishing interesting statistics, though. And he has, apparently, it, by, by saying this about Hikaru. Uh, hope, <laughs> interesting, yes, he did say it was interesting. Hope would come back one day if it will be clean from at least obvious cheaters. I promise I will continue trying my best to save chess from this disease. As much as I can, fighting with natural squeamishness, what a word, I don't even know what that means, which is the main reason my chess come departure. The strength is in truth peace i want that as a tattoo because there's a g in the letter strength but I, I want that as a tattoo with the piece the strength is in truth look um here's the problem right uh because vladimir has actually said several things that i do find interesting for instance he once you know went on chess.com and published some statistics and you know he had the statistics which said um you know he is sharing uh, uh, uh accuracy of various strong grandmasters in recent rapid tournaments 15 minute three second bonus um and uh you know the most accurate player is the young Belarusian grandmaster Denis Lazovic, who is rated like 25, 60 fide, and his average accuracy over 32 games is 95%. On the flip side, Denis Lazovic plays really solidly and makes a ton of draws, right? And then you have Maxim Vashelagrov, 18 games, 93% accuracy. Feruja, 92. Sevian, 92. Artemyev, 92. Kamsky, Carlson. So it's like, you know, he published this list, and so I don't exactly know what the argument is, right? Like, I don't know, uh, but, but, but he just publishes these stats. And... What are we supposed like? Are we supposed to look at this list and go, oh, anybody that's not in the top 10 of chess players in the world does not belong here? Like Lazovic, MVL's outside of the top 10, but he's a really good Rapid and Blitz player. Um, Sevian, Kamsky, you know, like, is that what we're supposed to do? So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the goal here is because Hikaru's not even on this list, right? Like Hikaru either doesn't have enough games in this time control or plays at an accuracy below 88.9%, which you can see up here is the lowest on the list. It's an Ishgiri. So, but this is like what Kramnik has been posting. And Kramnik also recently posted something, perhaps the only statistics of his that I've looked at and been like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. So this is, a, this is very, very, very blurry. But essentially what this is, is Title Tuesday players, players who play in Title Tuesday, the, uh, the weekly tournament on chess.com that happens uh, two times every Tuesday with lots of money, these are a bunch of players, and this is their performance rating in the 7th to 10th rounds. The money round is the 11th round, the final round of the tournament. So if you do well between rounds 7 and 10, you will be in the money, generally. And this is a list of people who perform at this level between rounds 7 and 10. So let's say you're a performing player 2, and you're 3,031 performance. When in the last round you are fighting for a prize... You perform at an ELO of 3,224. Now, that either means one of two things. You are really clutch. Like, you have great nervous system, and when you have to play for the money you need to win, you win. And the difference between these two numbers, right here, is 193. When you don't fight for money, you actually play worse, because you just don't care. So, again, this list is basically saying some people are clutch or they're cheating, right? I mean, that's, those are the only, uh, uh, like, unless I'm missing something. Am I missing something? I don't know. Like, uh, you know, again, why does your performance go up so much in the money round when you are playing for the money? Either you're really good, you hold yourself together. I can't. I don't hold myself together. But essentially, I think the point here is to say, 
a lot of people have, you know, an abnormally large win rate in the final round or performance in the last round of a money event like Title Tuesday. Okay. Okay. And Kramnik has brought up other things that I actually kind of agree with. For example, literally millions of people cheat at chess every single, well, not day, but millions of people cheat at chess. Thousands of people cheat at chess every day for no reason. You probably played a cheater in the past week. It could be a 14-year-old hanging out with their buddies that, like, found a chess bot, and they're all hanging out in a group chat together and just cheating against people, because they, they, that's what they do for fun. And then they're going to get banned. It could be somebody that, like, the way they play chess is they, they I, I've, you know, I know, I, I've not, I don't know people like this, but I've heard of, of things like this. People will just play games and use stockfish every now and then, because they think that somehow teaches them, and it makes them better they'll get banned. Like, they will. But people cheat all the time in completely, actually, truly meaningless games at, like, the 1500 level, 800 level, 700 level. I don't know why I went down 100. I meant to say, like, 300. So Kramnik's point is, why would title players not cheat online if money is involved? And there have been other discussions. Kramnik said he thinks 20% of title players cheat. Fabiano Caruana said he thinks 50% of title players like, have cheated. I think that's a sense. He didn't say that during a Title Tuesday, half the players cheat. Um, but he said something, like, about the 50%, like, just at some point. Hikaru thought it was closer to Kramnik. I think he thought the Fabiano one was a bit high, but I might be misquoting him. And Danny Wrench on the recent State of Chess.com, which is a show that he does every quarter, basically, where he talks about updates on Chess.com, developments on Chess.com, fair play and cheating on Chess.com, said it's more like 3%, something around like 3%, people who have been banned. Title players have been caught cheating, banned, confessed on Chess.com, because on Chess.com, to get a second chance account, which is a account where, you know, you can play again after they discover that you were cheating, um, you know, you said, yeah, I was cheating. And I'm sorry. Please let me open a second account. Nobody says anything. Um, me personally, I don't know what the number is, but I do subscribe to the theory of if a 2700 rated grandmaster, a top 10, top 20, even top like 40 grandmaster tried to cheat during a title Tuesday and needed to cheat four times over 11 games just for one move. I don't know how you catch that. Frankly, I'm not sure you can catch that. Maybe if Danny was sitting here with me or somebody from the F Fair Play team, they, they would say that we would have a debate, but I don't know. And to me, that is the scariest part. Not to mention, Daniel Dubov, Russian chess grandmaster, super strong guy, by the way. After you watch this video, go watch him do muscle-ups. There's like videos of him doing muscle-ups. It's like an unbelievable stuff uh, on YouTube. Uh, he went on a podcast and he said, here's the real problem. And this is fascinating. Let me, let me, food for thought before you go to that muscle up video. Stockfish, Leela, modern engines are 3,600, 3,700. It would be really stupid to cheat with those bots, right? Because all the algorithms now are revolved at that level, right? However, a chess bot from 2000, let's say 10, 13 years ago, can still beat, generally, I think, every human on the planet in a fate, in a heads-up game, equal, everything. So what if they use that? Modern-day engines would analyze a bot's games from 15 years ago and go, this is such an idiot human. They probably will not even, this is, this is what Duboff said, I'm not saying this is fact, I'm simply reporting all of this to you. I am saying that a bot that reviews a bot's games from 15 years ago and go, what was he, what was he doing? Like, what, what an idiot, <laughs> you know? And that's the real issue, in my opinion. It's like, I'm actually not sure you can con conclusively lock in a cheating accusation with evidence against anybody unless you physically catch them. Now, Chess.com does a seemingly very, very, very good job at this, meaning they have a massive list of people who they have said, you are cheating, and the person said, yep, sorry. And that's really weird, because that opens up another whole topic of, like, should getting banned on chess.com and confessing to it mean that you can't play live tournaments? Do you get a live suspension, too? Like, who's the international governing body of the game cheating-wise? Right, because we have FIDE, live over-the-board tournaments, and chess.com. Hybrid events, online events. But, I mean, chess.com is probably a larger international entity and known by more people than FIDE. FIDE is the established governing body, of course, but somehow they 
they, they got to work together. And that's, this is really weird. This is where it gets really weird for me because uh, I'm not, like, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't know. I listen to some of the stuff Kramnik and Fabiano say, and I go, yeah, I mean, I can, you know, I totally get their point. Um, last thing, today Hikaru played against Magnus in Title Tuesday, and Hikaru started with H4 um, because I guess they were trolling each other, and I guess Magnus was also playing H4 and H5 in every game. And then, you know, it was H4, B5, H5, Battle of the 3300s, perhaps the highest rated game ever in history on chess.com. 3318 versus 3302, crazy, absolutely crazy. Magnus now higher rated than Hikaru on chess.com. And what happened in this game is absolutely wild. A6 was played, Knight BD2, they traded, and in this position, Hikaru played Bishop to C4. He played Bishop to C4, he mouse slipped. He meant to play bishop to d3, of course, just developing his bishop. He played bishop c4, he mouse slipped, and Magnus did not let him off the hook. He took right away. <laughs> it was a mouse slip. Uh, and then, you know, again, the rest of the game is not really worth looking at. Hikaru, a sportsman, doesn't just resign after playing bishop c4, plays a little bit. Probably could have beaten me, like, in a handful of these games down a full piece, because I would have been terrified. But you can't beat Magnus down a piece. Magnus chases him around, is going to win all his pawns, is going to, you know, hunt his king, the, and he resigns. Um, and then afterward, Magnus tweeted, "Win." <laughs> he uh, took a screenshot of the move bishop c4, and he said, wins all of these online events, yet doesn't know how pawns capture? Interesting. <laughs> which, of course, is a reference to the original, which is some small new piece of statistics, uh, you know, I believe everybody would find this interesting. And this is the chess world in a nutshell. Uh, Passive-aggressive, petty, sarcastic, trolling each other constantly. This is, this is very funny, because when I read this, I read this as a jab at the original, you know, at this. I read this as a jab at, at that. And um, this is now going to be an existential problem for chess. Uh, do I think that there are titled players who cheat? I've actually never thought about that. I always just assumed, no, no way. Like, why would they? It would jeopardize everything, right? Um, but now I'm not so sure because uh, I've started really thinking about it, and I, I frankly am, am not so... If, if people don't want to oblige by the honor system, we could have a cycling situation. Remember, I think Lance Armstrong, that whole thing happened... And if the excuse is everybody's cheating, so I'm cheating. <laughs> guys, I don't know where we're headed, guys. I don't know. I know where I'm headed. I'm headed to um, I'm headed to the airport quite soon. So, um, I'll be back in New York. London was incredible. Uh, chess cheating scandal part three, new chapter. Hikaru versus Kramnik and Nepo, and I mean crazy. I just and for the record, uh, I don't. I guess I really didn't mention this throughout the video. Um, I, I don't think Hikaru is cheating at chess. I Like, it's a laughable thing to even... Again, it's binary, right? He either is or isn't. And to me, he is very, 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 very clearly not. Um, <laughs> and if he was and, like, other players were, like, where do we even stop? <laughs> like, they're all cheating. Like, they're all cheating. And I, I, just, I don't know. The whole thing is just so laughable to me. Uh, I don't know. And it's it's very it's tough for me because I agree with some of the stuff Kramnik posts. I find it interesting, like him, Fabiano, and then and then this. I just I don't I don't even know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. That's all. Get out of here.